Welcome, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we're looking at Gaussian random process. We have visited the, round, the Gaussian random variable, and now it's time to look at the specific case of the Gaussian random process. Let's look at the formal definition here. A random process x of t, a random process x of t, is defined to be Gaussian under the following condition. If the samples taking at different instances of time are jointly Gaussian. Remember that looking at the Gaussian process at a given time make it a random variable. So we require that the process at every instant of time being Gaussian and it's jointly Gaussian between all the different times. This definition applies to discrete as well to, continu as well to continuous time processes. Uh, discrete will have clearly explicit time and it also applies to continuous time processes. The joint PDF or the joint Gaussian random variable is determined by two things. The vector of means we're showing here in green and the covariance matrix which is shown in red here. So the following equation if applies to the joint PDF we have a Gaussian random process. Remember that a process is like an extension of random variables where we cover all the different instances of time. We can represent the matrix, the, the vector of means by M, and now it's function of time. We can also have a matrix to represent the covariance between the different instances of time. The diagonal will be the variance of the variables, and then the out of the diagonal will be the covariances. Uh, on the side here, I'm just showing some examples of randomly generated uh, processes with uh, different realizations. So we also can say that a wide sense stationary Gaussian process is also stationary in the strict sense. This is only for Gaussian, it's not a general statement. The reason is that Gaussian process is fully defined by the mean and the covariance. So if they are stationary, everything else is going to be stationary. So once it's wide sense stationary, it's also stationary in the strict sense, or strict sense stationary. The second note I'd like you to keep in your mind is that the Gaussian process can be completely defined by the vector of the co correlations and the, and the means, of course. So uh, we just mentioned that knowing the means and the variances give you the full BDF. Let's see the examples. Example of Gaussian, example of Gaussian random process. In this example, we're say we're told that a Gaussian process is wide sense stationary with mean equal to four. So the mean is constant, it's not function of time, it's just four. And the correlation is given by the following correlation. Because it's wide sense stationary, time does not show explicitly. We're only showing the time difference, which is tau. So then we are told in the question that specify the joint function for the three instances at different time instances where i is just a counter being 1, 2, 3. And then we have a reference time, let's say 0, t0. And then of course we want to add 1 half. This, this is going to add 1 half or 1 or 1 1.5. So we're basically having if i equal to 1, we'll get t0. This is going to be t0. If i equal to 2, I will get t0 plus half. And if i equal to 3, we'll get t0 plus 1. So we have a reference time after half a second and after one full, full second. We can write it this way or to write it formally, we're saying that i equal to 1, 2, 3, where ti so we're making it f more formal. All right, so we can pick two instances of time. Let's call one green and one blue. And um, if we substitute in the definition, we'll get the following expressions. This is where we just replace i with a k. The difference between the two, because we usually, we usually want to test in time difference because it's wide sense stationary. It will be just k minus i divided by half where i and k are given by the following uh, instances in time. So the correlation function 
is given by tau which is k minus i here that's the same equation given the question and we want now to find the covariance remember that the covariance equal or the auto covariance equal to the auto correlation which is this expression here minus the mean squared minus 4 squared if you subtract 4 squared the 16 cancels and we have the following expression for the covariance remember that k and i can be 1 2 3 we can substitute the values and we get different instances of time if i equal to 0 to 0 if i equal to k this is going to be 25 if i if k or i is different by minus by by one point i get 25 e to the power minus 3 over 2 or i get 25 e to the power minus 3 if the difference is just two units so we can try all of them remember there's an absolute value here so one minus two is just like two minus one we can write this in a matrix format so you can write it in a matrix format we have the 25 outside here of course minus six over over two is just three i am keeping the original substitution so you can uh, you can go back so we have 25 in the diagonal and then all these are the elements this is the covariance matrix once we get the covariance matrix and we know that we, we know what the mean is we can write the joint pdf now uh, let's look at a special case where we have iid gaussian sequences if we have independent identically distributed gaussian sequences of course we have the mean m because they are identical all i need to specify is sigma squared we will find out that the covariance matrix is always going to be diagonal and this diagonal is going to be sigma squared sigma squared because they are all the same the out of diagonal elements they are always going to be zero why because they are independent and it means it's they are uncorrelated so we have zeros here and there so we can say that the covariance matrix equal to sigma squared times delta i i this is the chronicle delta which is only one in the diagonal and it's zero otherwise it's equal to one when i equal to j which is in the diagonal and it's zero outside so we get an identity matrix we can say that this is equivalent to sigma squared times i where i is the identity matrix now if they are independent and identically distributed we can write the joint pdf as multiplication of the individual pdfs and i will get the following i will get the first expression raised to power k over two because we are multiplying k of them and then we have the exponential which is going to be the summation once we multiply the sum the exponentials this is because we are dealing with independent otherwise you can always go to the to the dissemination which is the joint pdf for the three for all the cases so this is a special case for iid otherwise we can use the, the formal format where we substitute for the covariance and so on they will give you the same thing okay so this is regarding the gaussian sequences or the gaussian random processes